Trace Trilco for the Sons of UCF. UCF baseball begins its final season in the American Athletic Conference, seeking an AAC championship and a return to the NCAA tournament. Its last appearance, 2017. Head coach Greg Lovelady's first season with the Knights. In 2022, the Knights lost several key players to injury and finished 35 and 25. UCF head coach Greg Lovelady is optimistic about the team's postseason chances, as he told me, during our conversation previewing the upcoming season. All right, Coach, opening day. What are you feeling? Do you get nerves? What's the, what's the sensation? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, uh, I don't know, something's got to be wrong with you if you're not nervous for, still for game days, but opening day is just a different feel. I mean, I, it's the best thing in sports, I think, just baseball opening day just has a different feel to it. It's just a really special day, and obviously just the excitement of, you know, um, you always have an idea of what team you're going to be and what you're, how you're going to play and who you have, but at the end of the day, you still don't really know until you get the games and get a feeling. And as much as we practice and stuff, things just come out in the games, and so you really want to get going and, and get to compete against other people and really get a sense of where we're at and how good we are and what do we need to work on and to improve. And so, um, you know, just really excited to go, go and compete with these with these guys. And so. Um, you know, I feel like the last, especially this last week, you know, you're really kind of itching to get to Friday. Big turnout for FanFest. Yeah. What were people telling you as they were talking to you? You had a line of people who wanted yeah. to talk with you. I mean, I think everybody's just excited. I think everybody loves loves baseball. Again, I think it just is a, it's such a, you know, sport that just especially older people that have grown up watching it with their parents and, and things like that, that it just uh, means a lot. And I think that, you know, I think our kids do a good job of, you know, engaging with the community and just, you know, I think people are excited to see our guys go out there and compete. And, um, you know, I so saw, I think that everybody's just excited, uh, just as excited as we are. And that's, that's exciting for me to know that there's people out there that are just as excited as we are. COVID has been a part of the game now the last couple of seasons. you got an older group of people. How, how would you assess the makeup of this team and how you think the veterans can help your younger guys? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really good mix because you do. I mean, we got a chance to have like four 23, 24-year-olds in the lineup, and um, whether that's on the mound or... or uh, have you ever had that? Uh, no, no, not at all. I mean, it's really, I mean just because of COVID, you just never have that. So in the last couple of years, you might have had one... But we're really kind of now at the, at the point where these guys have all been in the program for a while. So, I mean, you guys like Ben McCabe, who have played here for five years, and, you know, Nick Romano's been here for, for, for four years or three years, whatever it is. I mean, Tom joseph has been here. I mean, these guys have been in the, in the program. Rudy Gomez, but just a guy that's been around, even though he's only been in our program now for two years, like, just been around. So, um, it just gives you this leadership ability of guys that know what to expect. They know how to know what the grind is going to be like. Um, you know, Ben and, and Nick and Tom are all part of the 2020 team that got off to such a good start and felt like, you know, we didn't get to finish the job because of COVID. And so, and, and again, they're all at their last year. So I think that some of that changes their perspective on things and changes maybe their goals or, or, or whatnot. And, um, but it also gives the younger guys a great group of people to look up to um, and, and to be able to go to when they have issues or problems or when they go through slumps and how to handle it. And, and so they're, they're just a great arm of the coaching staff, I think, of things that we're preaching or things that we talk to them about that they're able to kind of make sure that, you know, we're not around, that they're still able to, to kind of speak the same language and be able to, to teach and lead. And, and so to know you have those kind of guys around, I think, really gives you a sense of um, just faith in, in the entire entire process but also to know that um you know you're going to have people that are that are backing up the coaching staff not just in terms of i'm just in terms of hey like you're going to go through some some bad times like and here's how you handle it this is what i've done this is what i did in the past and it's not just us as coaches having to worry about it where we know that we can have people in the locker room that are going to be doing kind of giving the same advice and and it's going to be uh i think that just gives us a chance to be really really good when you have that kind of leadership and that kind of age Past couple of seasons, injuries have uh, been a factor, yeah. right? Uh, and you talked at Media Day about evaluating that. What changes have you have you made that you yeah. think will help? Yeah, I mean, at one, I think we just kind of tried to to really um, 
put them in better situations uh, of making sure that we're, you know, testing them almost daily in terms of just making sure readiness testing and, and things like that to see where their bodies are at to make sure that we can adjust our plans accordingly based on how we feel like uh, they're doing. We brought in an arm care app um, and a new trainer, Kaylee Shores, who's been just an absolute rock star. She is really, really smart and really, really great with the kids. The kids have really responded well. I mean, just a different vibe of um, not only keeping guys healthy, but but when they do feel um, you know sore or whatever the case is, and the ability to get them back to, to baseline faster and um, you know, kind of stop the, the downward trend. And so um, she's been huge. You know, obviously some, you know, you try to adjust the weight program uh, to try to limit the amount of stress, especially if you're putting on pitcher's arms. So we made, we made some changes there. So I think we, we did a little bit of everything um, just in terms of how we go about our daily routine. But obviously Kaylee's been a huge addition to our, our program that I think has been by far the biggest difference. How does the team look now from an injury standpoint going into the season at media day? You mentioned Sundin. Where is he in his yeah. return? So he is he's progressing well. Um, he has been um, getting better and better every single day, adding more and more to his plate. Uh, he just started started hitting, uh, so we're, we're making like real positive strides. Um, it's really hard to put a date. I mean, um, exactly where it's going to be because it, it really is. There's, there's setbacks and things like that that can happen. But um, you know, definitely before conference, he'll be back. That that I feel pretty comfortable saying. Uh, it could be week three. It could be week four. You know, it could be week five. Like somewhere in that range. You know, it just depends on how he continues to, to to move and how he continues to bounce back. Just from as they add more and more stress to him. How does his body react to that? So, um, but we, we expect him back and excited, you know, to get him healthy. And he's done a good job of, of rehab and uh, putting himself in a situation where, you know, I think that he's going to be a little bit quicker recovery than we thought maybe it was going to be in the, when it first happened. So, um, kind of excited for that. You know, Zach Bennett um, is close. Um, probably will not be available opening weekend. I just don't feel like we need to push him that much. Like just as good as he he is and. Um, again, I just don't feel like rushing him back is, is going to be the right thing. So we'll take it again week to week. Um, but he should should be here, in, you know, within the first you know couple weeks of the season. We feel like we can get him in there. And some of that has to do with what situations arise and where can we get him in the you know do we need to put him in inner squads and then when do we feel comfortable getting him into a game and put less stress on him? You know, if you want to put him in a real stressful situation in a real game, you got to have make sure that you've put him in some of those stressful situations in practice different if you can get him into a game that maybe is you know 10 to nothing or you know or 10 run lead where there's or eight run lead where there's less stress and it's just go out there and get some work in in a live game so um hopefully he'll he'll be back again both those guys will be back um, sooner than later um and it will be huge additions to the team what do you like most about your pitching staff this yeah. year i mean i just think talent and depth um i think last year uh we had some some talent at the very top and then we just got really young and inexperienced um, as you kind of went down the line. And so you start losing some of those more talented guys um, that had some experience, then that really put a lot of pressure on some just young, inexperienced guys. And you saw some growth over the year, over the year, like a guy like Jacob Marlowe, who got really, uh, really became a big part of our, of our uh, rotation late. A guy like Rudy Gomez, who just was coming off injury and his, the growth that he, he made, um, but we just put a lot of stress on guys that just weren't ready, you know, and it went, and we just, there was no other options, you know. So I think this year we just have a, um, a better mix um, and then just more depth. Uh, so the talent level goes a lot deeper, uh, but then also guys that are experienced and whatnot um, are, are way down the line that, you know, if, if we do have injuries or whatever the case is, or uh, you're put in certain situations where you go extra innings or you're, you're stressing a, 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 a pitching staff. And there was last year where we stressed the pitching staff. I mean, the one weekend where we lost Hunter and Connor, and they threw, uh, I think, two innings combined and two starts. Like, that's, um, you know, that's 27 or 25 innings that we had to find from the bullpen. And that really stressed us. Um, where then all of a sudden that Tuesday game now you're trying to you, it's tough to get back and then you just felt like you were trying to crawl out of a hole and the games just kept coming and just weren't giving you enough time and it took us a couple of weeks to kind of get through all that where now it's like we feel like if, if that ever happened like that we we won't be stressing them so much where we're putting in guys that 
you know, are just inexperienced and, and can't handle it. But even guys that had pitched a ton last year, um, you know, they're, they're kind of in those situations where those are going to be the guys that you're using, where you really feel like, man, like this feels a lot better knowing if I got to pitch this guy, my 10th guy on the, in the rotation compared to last year's 10th guy is, um, way different and so you just feel a lot better that the the talent is there but also the depth to overcome whatever whatever happens what's it look like for your weekend rotation yeah so rudy gomez is going to go friday um just deserves it he's been such a great leader um obviously you know we, we've now been able to see that second half rudy from the fall and back until and now in january and february so um just has elite stuff um elite command elite mindset elite work ethic um, and he's just he's probably one of the best teammates that, that I've ever coached and just how much he cares about his teammates, how much, um, you know, the guys love him. And um, but at the end of the day, like it comes down to Friday night, you got to know somebody that you can go out there that can has the stuff to go up against somebody else's best. And we believe that that Rudy has that ability. So he'll go on Friday. Cam Leiter is going to go on Saturday. Um, he's just done a great job as a freshman, really. Um, making the the transition into the college game and is just super talented. Obviously, has the lineage, uh, but just has the the maturity, uh, somebody beyond his years, and obviously the knowledge, um, but also has the stuff. And so he's he's got a chance to be a really really special player um, in three years when we look back at his time at UCF. But um, you know, we're obviously getting him a chance to start on Saturdays, and and that's going to be um, you know a great addition to our rotation. But uh, I'm excited for the year that he's going to have. Sunday, we're going to go with uh, Dom Stagliano, uh, transferred from Stetson, was a freshman All-American last year. Uh, just has a great makeup, um, great, great competitiveness on the mound. Uh, his off-speed stuff is, is really good, and he's done a great job of just pounding the zone, being able to mix pitches, um, but really, really keep our hitters off balance. And so... Um, you know, we're excited. Just the year that he had last year, again, he had a ton of starts, ton of experience, and, and has really made the transition to, to UCF really, really seamlessly. So excited to see him really get after it on Sundays. And, um, and so just excited about the, the entire rotation as, as a whole. How has your approach to the transfer portal changed these last couple of years? Yeah, I mean, I think we've had a lot of success in it. You know, it's, um, it, it's trying to get age, experience, talent, um, guys that understand what Division One is like. I mean, it's just hard to, to replicate that as a freshman or either, even a junior college transfer. So, um, you know, we, we've, we've gotten kids that have been really good at other places. We've gotten kids that maybe just felt like they weren't getting a, a fair shake or, or whatever the case is. And so we've really done a good job, I think, of getting in there and trying to find kids that would fit into our system and, and that we felt like we can make them better or utilize them better um, than where they were and, and, and give them more opportunities, whether it's that they weren't playing at the, at the previous institution or or that they just felt like they wanted a bigger challenge. So uh, we've kind of got a mix of both and had some success at that. A guy like Connor Stain, obviously, last year was huge for us. Um, and so... Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you, you kind of wait and see and, and kind of reevaluate at the end of the season, like really how successful you're, what, what did you learn, what did, what did you not learn and, uh, from previous things, and then try to, try to make the decisions the next year going forward based off of the things you've learned. What impact have you seen new pitching coach Mike Maroth have on, uh, on the young guys so far? I mean, it's been great. I mean, obviously he had, you know, really skilled players and um, a really good pitching staff when he got here, but he's able to take things – and just kind of being able to do a very good job of tweaking the guys here and there and uh, really make some some fine-tuned adjustments where he didn't have to overhaul anybody. It really wasn't going to be a great plan to overhaul anybody when you come in the middle of the year, but just the knowledge that he's had, um, the type of things that he's been able to see at the highest level, um, and then being able to take the talented group that we had and just be able to kind of make these minor adjustments to really – press these guys forward and, and even make them even better has been has been awesome to see just the growth in just a few weeks and just again these minor adjustments that are just being able to take guys 
from really good to great or from whatever the case is, but just taking them up a notch uh, by being able to have fresh eyes on them, but be able to make these slight adjustments that, you know, with his somebody like him that had the experience at that level has been able to bring has been, it's been fun to see some of our guys make some, some jumps. A lot of the talk about the injuries is about pitchers, but Nick Romano was a big yeah. loss a season ago. How good is it to have him back? And then just let's talk about your offense. Yeah. Bit. So just excited about the mm-hmm. offense. Again, you have to have 23, 24 year olds like Ben McCabe and Tom Joseph and Nick Romano and, the, and kind of hitting in the middle of the lineup. Um, again, guys that have a ton of at bats, a ton of experience, um, but just obviously, you know, the, Nick's been one of our best players in practice for, for three seasons. Um, and, and Obviously, gets off to to the start that we all knew he he could last year, and, and has the unfortunate injury. So um, frustrating for him, um, and, and really, uh, it was a it was a kick to the gut for our entire team. And when we, when, we, when he went down, it was you know it was really a blow just because he had got off to such a good start. He, you know, we knew he was the kind of focal point of our offense. So, um, but um, but to have him back and and to get him going, obviously he wasn't ready in the fall, so he's still trying to get that timing. Um, and get used to it, but I know that you know the guy. The guy works really hard, and he's obviously been through a lot of this, and um, so he, he knows what this is all about, what the grind, and, and how to kind of get on time as quickly as he possibly can, and make adjustments, not just game to game or even at bat to at bat. But he's an older guy that's going to know how to make adjustments pitch to pitch. So to have those three guys kind of anchor again, Andrew Bray, who who has always been hurt, but has been super experienced and, and, and is older and been around the program to have a guy like that in the lineup um you know and then you, again you're bringing in Lex Bodecker who, who played every day last year so um gives you some more some more uh, age and experience um and so you know you, then you start mixing in the, the younger guys the talented guys like like uh, Corey Robinson who you know went to Florida last year and did get to play a ton who really had our best fall you get John Rice who, who obviously had a great sophomore year at Ole Miss and put up decent numbers in, in decent amount of time, but hasn't hasn't played baseball in 18 months. So just trying to get him going, um, and then Drew Ferro, who's just a really special freshman that that uh, you know kind of reminds you a lot of Alex Freeland, a little bit more toolsy, not as much baseball background in terms of he's a big football player. Alex was a big full time baseball player from the time you know he was five years old. Drew's kind of playing catch up when it comes to that just because he was such a big time football player. But from a tool standpoint, power standpoint, arm strength standpoint, all those things are, are way ahead of what Alex was as a freshman. So you just hope that, you know, just the game, he's able to slow the game down and, and be able to relax and handle it. Uh, Brady Shannon, you know, has hit a bunch of home runs for us in the fall and winter. Um, big three sports star out of Ohio that is, I mean, looks like he should be playing like tight end, you know, on the football team. Um, but just a big, powerful guy that's going to have ability to be a middle of the order guy in the future, but um, you know has the ability to really do some great things early in his career. So you start mixing all those guys around, and, and you, you start putting together a pretty good offense. And, and so um, you know Ted's done a great job of preparing these guys. You know, obviously the first couple of weeks are always I feel like the hitters are always behind the pitchers, um, but the last week of practice I felt like the hitters really took a step forward. Guys, really Cole Russo. Uh, really had a great last weekend and really starting to come into his own. So again, you've got depth. You've got you know the catching position. You've got ability to move guys around. Uh, you got to be able to make. You, we have the ability to make matchups if we need to to play defense when we want to. Um, and so it's it's really gives me some options. Um, and so you're just kind of excited again about the depth and and the ability that you're not just kind of like these are our guys and they get they better play or we're, we're in trouble like we have ability to do different things anytime we want to earlier you mentioned john rice Plumley. what role do you see him having on this team yeah i mean it's tough because you know he just hasn't played a lot and he's trying to get that timing so you feel like he's always going to be behind this time of year so um he's a plus defender a plus runner um pl- plus makeup um plus energy you know what i mean it's just going to be about this game is really really difficult to swing the bat so how well he swings the bat is just going to determine how he's going to play. I do expect him to get at least a, a couple starts this weekend, an opening weekend. So uh, I do think he's going to play, um, you know, and it's just about how quickly can he get the, the timing back and be able to see pitches and, and do that. So we've been trying to get him as many at-bats as we possibly can, try to get that back as much as we possibly can. But it's obviously, you know, you think about a Jeffrey Pena type guy in the outfield, like that's that's a, a great comp in terms of those guys are just elite center fielders with elite speed. So he brings all those same – um, tools that, that Jeffrey had. Uh, so now it's just about you know the bat speed and the power. He has all that. It's just, it's just about being able to 
to hit a 95 mile an hour fastball with an 86 mile an hour slider and you don't know which one's coming. And so um, that takes time and that takes reps. And, and so he's going to need to get those. And so hopefully we'll be able to keep him in the lineup as much as we possibly can and try to get his timing down. Because once, once he's, he feels good, I mean, he's got a chance to really help us. New look for the ballpark with the new fences. Has that changed the dimensions of the park? Uh, barely. A little bit maybe down the corners. It was a very odd-shaped corner. Like the first maybe 25 feet of the fences were kind of they they'd come in and jet back out to get to the pole. Uh, so, um, But really from 25 feet on, the, the dimensions didn't really change. Uh, so maybe down the lines. Uh, there's a little piece of, of land. There was about five foot that you could hit it at and sneak a home run, but that's probably moved back five feet, but nothing nothing major. Um, but the fence, I think, just looks really good. It's really cleaned up the ballpark. I think it's going to be a cool thing in the outfield for people to be able to stand out there and watch the game and from anywhere in the outfield, not just in the right center field gap, but the whole outfield now is ability to, to people to go out there and you know whether, they, whether they're tailgating or backing their cars up and, and just being able to watch the game from out there and uh, I think it would be a cool situation for the students just to continue to, to be out there and, and enjoy the game from out there and, and not really have to worry about being blocked by you know, only one only one section being able to open. But now we've got a whole area out there for people to, to kind of enjoy the view from. So um, excited about that. Last season in the American fans want an American Athletic Conference championship for return to the NCAA regional. What's a reasonable expectation that you set for the fan base? Um, I mean, I don't think any of that's un unreachable. I mean, I think we got a, a special group of guys. Um, you know, um, th this game comes down to can you win the close ones um, and, uh, and can you stay healthy? And I think that, you know, we, we proved last year that we had the mindset and the ability to overcome winning 35 games with, you know, seven of your best players out, I thought was a, a absolute um, unbelievable season. Our kids did a great job of just – being able to overcome and just next man up mentality. And um, if we can stay healthy, um, you know, we stay healthy last year, we're over 40 wins. And that, that's a really, really different different situation. I mean, we win 40 games in, in our league and, in, and even in Division One level in general. Like, you put yourself in a good situation to do some special things. So, um, you know, I feel like we're in a we're much better situation already, even at this point of the season. One, from a talent standpoint. Two, we had already lost several guys for the season at this point last year. So uh, we're in a much better situation uh, that, I, that I think that we have the age and the talent, the experience to really have, to really have a, a great year. So I'm um, excited to see our guys go out there. And, um, you know, I think the sky's the limit for us. But one at a time, one series, one game, right. and it opens this weekend with Sienna, and you're looking forward to it. I sure am. Can ho hopefully see everybody out there. Opening night here at John Juliano Park, Friday, February 17th. First pitch at 6 o'clock against the Siena Saints. Night's home Saturday and Sunday as well. 34 of the 56 games on the schedule here at John Juliano Park. For the Sons of UCF, I'm Trace Trolko.